Hello, this is Dr. Johnson Steigelman. Today, let's talk about energy and work. By the end of today's lesson, you'll be able to determine the work done by an individual force or a combination of forces. You'll be able to define the terms energy, potential energy, and or kinetic energy. You will also be able to determine the dot product of two vectors and to use energy considerations to solve problems. Okay, energy is very simply the ability to do work. That is a very simple definition, but it gives us a lot of power uh, in our physics class. So potential energy is energy that's stored. Uh, some examples of this would be chemical potential energy. That could be something like gasoline or a sandwich that you had for lunch. Gravitational potential energy uh, is energy that is due to the location of something. So you have water behind a dam, that water is going to fall, and we can get energy out of that. That stored energy is the gravitational potential energy. You can also have something called elastic potential energy. If you have a compressed spring, when you stretch that spring or compress that spring, you put energy into it and you can get that energy back out. The other type of energy is called kinetic energy. This is the energy due to the motion of a body. We'll take a look at specific examples of each of these. In particular, we'll look at gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy, and kinetic energy. Uh, you may look at chemical potential energy at some point in a chemistry class. Okay, when we are looking at work, we need to know the displacement, we need to know the force. So in our equation, we've got W equals the force vector dotted with the displacement vector. We'll talk about what dot means in just a moment. It's actually a special type of uh, multiplication. But we can also write it as Fd cosine theta. The units for work are Newton meters. So work is in Newton meters where you take a Newton, multiply it by a meter. You get something that's called a joule. That word joule rhymes with school. It's named after a scientist who did a lot of studies on uh, energy. And one joule is also known as one Newton meter. So to give you an example of this, a quarter pounder weighs about one Newton. Now in actuality, it's about 1.1 Newtons, but for our example, we'll just use one Newton. Uh, that includes uh, the burger cooked with the bun. Uh, it's just a little bit more than four ounces whenever you include all that into it. If you lift it one full meter, you do one joule of work. So by lifting it uh, that distance of one meter, you just did one joule of work. Okay, let's take a look at the dot product and what this dotting means. So Two ways to write the dot product are f dot d or f d cosine theta. We also call this the scalar product because the result is a scalar. The vectorness uh, kind of washes itself out whenever you do this type of multiplication. There are two ways to multiply vectors together. The other is known as the vector product or the cross product. We'll talk about it later when we talk about rotations and torques. Okay, to take a look at these two. Remember, we're multiplying two vectors together. So if you look at the component of f along d, you can see here that we drop down a line and we get the component along d. Uh, we call that f cosine theta. Now we could alternatively drop d back towards f to get d cosine theta. This second way of viewing it uh, isn't really intuitive, so I usually stick with the first one. But either way, we can write these down as f dot d is equal to f cosine theta times d, or f times d cosine theta. Doesn't matter which way you put those together, you get the same result. But what this really means is that we're taking the magnitude of the first vector and uh, its component along the direction of vector 2, and then we're multiplying it by the magnitude of vector 2. When we do this type of multiplication, the angle really comes into play. So let me do two examples here. We've got one force that's in the direction of the displacement, and we've got a second force 
same size, same displacement, but now it's at 90 degrees uh, to each other. So if we apply the work equation, we've got the work is equal to the force vector dotted with the displacement vector. We can write that down as W equals FD cosine theta. The angle that we're looking at is zero, so we throw in cosine of zero. And because the cosine of zero is just one, we've got the work is equal to the force times the distance. In the other case, we're going to apply the same equation. Work is equal to the force vector dotted with the displacement vector. Again, we'll do that written out as W equals FD cosine theta. This time, though, the angle goes in as 90 degrees. And because the cosine of 90 degrees is zero, when we multiply this all the way through, we get that there is no work done. So notice here when the work is perpendicular, or excuse me, when the force is perpendicular to the displacement, you end up with a work of zero. That will come into play several times uh, over the next couple of units that we do. So keep it in the back of your mind. Okay, notice that the direction can have a huge, huge effect on the final result. You can have a situation where the same information going in with the, the exception of the different angles can give you all of the possible work or no work at all. So let's do an example. Suppose that we have a traveler pulling her suitcase through the airport with the handle making a 60 degree angle from the horizontal. If the traveler pulls on that handle with a constant force of 200 newtons, what amount of work goes, does she do in pulling that suitcase for 50 meters? So we're going to draw the free body diagram, but before we actually do the problem, I'd like you to think for a second. Which of these four options is the best free body diagram? So pause the video if you can, hang out for a second, think about it, and then we'll come back. Okay, it turns out that the one we want to use is, in fact, the second option. We'll talk about why on the next slide. So the reason we use this particular option is because the pull upwards is going to take a little bit away from the normal force. The bag isn't going to be pushing down on the floor quite as hard as it was before. Okay, gravity, of course, is going to pull straight down. And the pull on the handle is going to pull up at that 60 degree angle. Now, if we look at the two parts that um, aren't perpendicular to the displacement, we can look at that component of the pull. And that's the only piece that's going to matter. Because Fn and Fg are both perpendicular to D, they contribute nothing because of that idea of cosine 90 degrees is equal to zero. So using just the force of the pull and the fact that it is Fp cosine theta that comes into play when we do our uh, F dot D. So we've got the work is equal to Fp D cosine theta. If we put the angle in, we've got 60 degrees. And now we've got, putting in our, our other numbers in, we've got 200 newtons times 50 meters times one half because the cosine of 60 degrees is one half. Multiplying that half through, let's take it out of the 200. Now we've got 100 times five times 50 uh, and we've got units of Newton meters. That gives us 5,000 joules. Now it's a little fast and loose with the um, significant digits here. In general, you would have some very specific uh, significant digits that would go into this. But notice it took 5,000 joules of work to move this thing the 50 meters. Okay, let's take a look at a different situation here. In this case, we've got a two kilogram brick that's being lifted two meters, and it's being done with a force of 50 newtons. We want to know how much work is being done on the brick. So we're going to identify all of the forces that are acting, and we're going to determine the net force because we're looking for the work done on the brick, not by a particular force, but all of the forces added together. 
So we've got the applied force pointing up. We've got the gravitational force pointing down. So the net force is the applied force plus the gravitational force. Notice I've written this as a vector equation. When we look at how these two are related to each other and we change it into the vector equation, excuse me, the algebraic equation, we've got F net is F applied minus FG because F applied and FG point in opposite directions. We're going to use that net force in our work equation. So we've got F net dot D for our work. That gives us W is the quantity F applied minus FG times D times the cosine of the angle between them. Remember that FG is actually MG, so we've now got W is equal to the quantity F app minus MG and to that quantity D cosine theta. Now let's throw in our numbers. So we've got 50 newtons minus two kilograms times 9.8 meters per second times two meters times the cosine of zero degrees. The reason it's zero degrees is because D and the net force both point in the same direction. Okay, because the cosine of theta uh, equals zero is one, we just throw in a one there and it has a positive sign because cosine of zero is positive one. Okay, and when I did the 20 newtons here, I did round a little bit. In reality, you would want to use the proper number of significant digits for that. So it comes out to be about 30 newtons times 2 meters, which is a four, excuse me, a work of 60 joules because a newton times a meter is a joule. Okay, we'll do lots of problems like this where we're looking at the work done on an object. So you have to make sure that you do take into consideration all of the forces. So as a quick review, energy is just the ability to do work. We do have a couple of different types of work that we'll talk about more in later lectures. Make sure that you read the question and you figure out whether it wants the total work or the work done by a single force and then use that proper force or net force to solve the problem. So there we've got our two equations. They're both equivalent. It just depends on what information that you're given. The work is the force dotted with the displacement. Both of those are vectors. If you work your way through it, you could also write it as the work is equal to FD cosine theta. Remember that the dot product puts the cosine in there so it's like you're taking the amount of f along d and then multiplying those two things together and if you're looking at the forces on a particular object you have to look at the net force look at the direction of the displacement and then you're set to go hopefully this has been helpful good luck and we'll see you in the next mini lecture